Hello everyone, we are here at OFC 2025 in San Francisco and I'm here with Reng Chen Yu at the Terrahop booth. Morning Reng Chen, you have exciting demos here and uh, we start with the most exciting demos. 400 gig per lane and you don't only show optics but you also have the first DSP test chip for 400 gig per lane. Yes, uh, this is very exciting uh, actually for our industry because uh, there are important discussion and demonstration of components before, but this is the first time ever with DSP coming together with optics in the module and demonstrating uh, impressive uh, results, uh, demonstrating the feasibility. I think industry now can take a breathe of, say, two years down the road, 400 gig is on the way. Yeah, and it looks impressive. It's really an open eye, really impressive. Do you have a feel already for the power consumption and relative to, uh, you know, 200 gig per lane? I think on the, let's just call it power per bit basis, it will be down. But uh, uh, obviously, this is very early going of that. So it's going to take time uh, working the technologies. Uh, we're going to improve both, both on the DAB we partner, but also the optics to go inside the module. Yeah. And what ranges do you plan? So what different variants of modules uh, do you plan for 400 gig per lane? Again, standardization still in uh, work right now. Uh, I think this is demonstrating 400 gig pan 4 can go another generation in optics. So I, I will anticipate like all the DR4, FR4 and other uh, possibilities going to now become feasible. Very good. Excellent. Great milestone. So let's continue with your inside the data center solutions. You have had uh, 1.6 2x DR4, 2x FR4, 2x LR4 for a while with 5 nanometer DSPs. So now you have a complete lineup with 3 nanometer DSPs. Can you talk a little bit about your new products? Yeah, so 1.6T is now start to ship uh, starting this year. And the volume is going to run up next year. So the industry is going to transition quickly from 5 nanometer, 3 nanometer. So this is actually first time now coming together with 3 nanometer DSP, lower power, with a range of uh, 1.6T options for customers, 2 by DR4, 2 by FR4. Importantly, also the 2 by LR4 allow customers now to scale out their AI data centers, not only just inside the building, but also these gigawatt data centers with many buildings, and they need to span much longer distance, like up to 6 kilometers demonstrated here. Yeah, and the power consumption, if you compare 3 nanometer versus 5 nanometer, roughly? Uh, so close to 30 watt for 5 nanometer, now it's in the middle of uh, 25 watts plus minus. So that's like very significant power reduction. Yeah. And are you sampling this or when will you ship volume? I would say we are prepared to basically transition from uh, MPI into production. I would say end of year to early next year. Okay, very good. Yeah. Impressive. So here we have another interesting demo uh, with multi-core fiber, 800 gig 2 by DR4. Multicore fiber has been in research for a decade uh, or even longer, but now it really made uh, made it to your booth to a demo. So that's very exciting. Tell us about it. Yes. Uh, so to build these uh, really large AI data centers, uh, talking about hundreds of thousands of GPUs and even up to a million GPUs per uh, big data center campus, the fiber has become a very challenging issue. So a multiple fiber basically allow customer to actually reduce, greatly reduce the number of fiber counts. And now we have built this natively right inside a transceiver. So allow customer to then deploy these uh, with much more fiber efficient solutions for customer. And again, this is a, another two kits for customer so they can continue to evolve on that. So it's very exciting uh, new development. Yeah. And how do you see multi-core fiber? So will that be good for certain ranges only, or will you be able to do FR4, LR4 kind of uh, products as well? Or? Yeah, so to start with, uh, we're going to start with so-called DR4, parallel fiber, but with single wavelengths. Uh, that actually in itself had good attributes because single wavelengths uh, spread out a lot less. So you can go a lot further, actually, compared to like CWDN approach. So you can go to 2 kilometer, 400 gig, uh, PAM4. So actually, it's, it's a good extension of capabilities as well. Yeah. And then from uh, from an assembly perspective, so is it fully under control already? So how do you kind of attach multi-core fibers? Is that uh, a process that you have developed internally? So the key element here is a transition from a traditional wave guy, uh, so-called FAU, basically fiber attachment unit. And we are already working with partners to basically make that unit 
scalable and manufacturable. But this is very early going with this new development. So we are basically developing with partners and customers, hopefully get deployed in the next couple of years. But, but very exciting. Yeah, thank you. So now we are looking at your 64 by 64 optical circuit switch. And I think the highlight here is this is not a traditional MEMS based, but a silicon photonics based circuit switch. Yes, this is actually the industry first uh, OCS built on silicon photonics platforms. So it's actually not free space based. It's actually built right on the silicon photonic platform. So uh, this is allow us to actually benefit from the next phase of AI build up to reduce the power, improve the availability and reliability of these uh, clusters, and also reduce the cost and power of the AI networking. So it's exciting uh, development for the industry. Yeah, and you show here 64 by 64, how is that scaling? Uh, potentially can scale to hundreds, uh, say 140 by 140 or even 500 by 500. So there's potential to continue to grow the capability of the switch. Yeah, and your target is that mainly scale in or scale up uh, or scale out? What yeah, what they call are? scale up or scale out. Uh, uh, currently, uh, the industry actually been looking at both uh, because you can actually build these uh, uh, fabrics with uh, OCS, but you can also reduce the spine switch count by using the OCS to reduce power and cost. Very good, impressive. Yeah, thank you. So a decade ago, we said that everything will be optical one way or another. I think we are finally getting there. So this is uh, PCI Express 7 optically. So we go to compute from networking to compute. Can you show us a demo? Yeah, so we are demonstrating here uh, optical connectivity with uh, so-called PCIe Gen 6 uh, with the root complex and endpoints. Uh, this is actually first time ever really going through this complete uh, demonstration. Uh, this is actually uh, allow us to now we use optical connections to go to the compute nodes. So you can do GPU to GPU, uh, GPU to memory, CPU to memory, CPU to storage. So there's a number of applications with optical connections now greatly expand the coverage of compute uh, to compute connections. Uh, used to be copper limited to within the rack. Now you can do multi-rack connectivity. Yeah, and it's if you have 10 meters here, so I think that gives you a lot of flexibility, right, on how you can. Yeah, so 10 meters will allow you to go at least a few racks in a row. So uh, that, that will actually be a pretty significant step up from just a couple meters with the copper. Yeah, excellent. And how is it from a power consumption, if you compare that to traditional PCI, is that comparable, or do you have a little bit more power because of the optics? Or? Yeah, so actually that's interesting. So we actually here have a LPO. It's an LPO innovation plus PCIe on top of it. So that allow us to have very low power transceiver based uh, AOC, we call active optical cable. So that actually achieved that goal with the low power, but much longer range. Very good, very interesting because LPO was really developed for the networking and now, you know, that's- Yes, really now started getting to, to the compute. To compute, right? Excellent. Yeah, thank very you. Very good demo. Thank you, thank, thank you. you very much.